Welcome to Lone Tar YouTube videos. This video is going to demonstrate how to manipulate output environment variables within Lone Tar. First thing we're going to want to do is be in the Lone Tar main menu. Notice I'm, I'm running SCO, but this is the same process for Linux as well. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to option 8, environment. Then option number 7, output. And the first variable is the mail to summary. This is where you would email anybody. It could be users on the system, it could be email addresses or anything. So we're going to first edit this. By default, it ships emailing to user root. So we're going to change that. So we're going to hit E to edit. Hit number one, change current settings. And all you got to do is type in whatever you want. I'm going to use user root user admin uh, cactus at cactus.com lontar at gmail.com so basically all you have to do is with every username and every email address just denote it with a space a white space in between each and you can put as many as you'd like once you're done you just press enter it will su succeed and then when you get back to the summary here, you got now mail to equals to all your specifications. So to go to the next variable, you just press enter, and it's the mail command. This you never really have to change unless your operating system, the, the minus s flag, or there needs some other flag to run mail properly, which is very rare, but you never know. Or you might want to run an extra flag. So you can edit that there but normally no people don't edit that this variable the next variable is number 75 that's the printer variable this is usually important for someone who wants to print summaries at the end of every backup failed or successful so when they come in in the morning they see a little printout in the sheet and they know how the backups verifies went uh, we can edit this and you will see the change printer and normally what it will be is LP space minus D and then your printer name with no space after the minus D just like that so whatever your printer name is on the network laser jet whatever you do LP space minus D and then the printer name and then press enter and then quit and you'll know if it's successful or not with the printer variable at the bottom will equal whatever you specified it to and the next variable is the editor to use within LT menu. Always it's VI. I mean, I don't know anyone that ever changes it. VI is a very powerful tool. Uh, the other variable, number 77, is display all summary of log files to a terminal. Uh, this is default is no. And this one, display the summary of log files on this terminal. And it's dev console. This rarely ever gets changed. Uh, Use pager to display page screen output. It's the less command. Uh, you know, less is more. It's better than the more command. Uh, reverse video on LT menus. This is only really with SCO. Linux doesn't have this anymore. So obviously it's not set, so there's no reverse video. Uh, use color for airbag menu. That is by default no. Uh, and again, only SCO has this ability anyway. And then append catalog purging results to ltar.log this is very important because it basically the ltar.log you're, you're basically saying for it to append every time you do a backup so if you say yes to this it'll append basically it will clean up the file so often if you do not append it basically uh, every time ltar.log gets written, it'll just clobber it. Uh, this one is a very biggie with people who get a lot of emails with notifications of files with a lot of white space. Um, a lot of people don't like to get those reports, especially emails, especially if there's a lot of files with them. So you can edit this and set it to no. By default, it's set to yes. And then the last but not least, which is a very cool thing, is the subject header in the email summaries and in the printer summaries. Uh, by default, it says loan-tar dot. 
here's where a lot of people put the server's name on it. So when they see this printout or this email summary, they can know what server it came from, especially if they're dealing with a lot of different servers using Lone Tar. So you, how you would do it is hit edit, and you can either set it to the Lone Tar serial number, set it to a system node name. I like to customize it. I like to keep the Lone dash tar dot and then server A, I'm going to call it. And then have a dot at the end because you'll see that it appends the, you know, LTAR master dot cron or whatever. So you always want to have it ending it with a dot so it'll look evenly when you actually see the printout. And that is all about the environment output variables within Lone Tar.